Hello Indie Game Fan, there have been some significant new additions and shifts in the co-op landscape since we last took a look, so the best experiences begin with Heavenly Bodies, a physics-based title where you play as cosmonauts in the 1970s, having to maneuver yourself and objects around in the zero gravity of space. If you watched any sci-fi space movies, you'll be acutely aware of the dangers and hazards where losing your grip on handles can result in your character floating off into space for all eternity. But while there is a sense of imminent danger, at its core it's a wacky physics title that uses the thumbsticks and triggers as you haplessly flop about in a manner not unlike Quop, where Quop hijinks just results in the funniest of moments. Cheating a little bit here since I'm not just recommending one game but four instead, where the We Were Here series of games are excellent first person co op titles. These consist of We Were Here, We Were Here 2, We Were Here Together, and We Were Here Forever, releasing from 2017 to 2022, where all of them are about working together to escape medieval castles, where the usage of voice communication is essential, with some clever puzzles as well. You don't have to play them all in order since they are all standalone titles, but the first one is free, so perhaps check that out first. Whether you choose agent, Or choose hacker. There have been an increasing number of asymmetric multiplayer titles, where I do love the concept of Operation Tango, a two-player title that is based on secret agent fiction, where one player plays as the agent infiltrating the base, and the other, the hacker providing backup support. For example, the hacker can unlock doors and give access to the agent, where it then comes down to execution in having to avoid patrol robots for example, absolutely nailing the feel of such movies. There have been quite a number of games that eat the overcooked style of chaos in their co-op gameplay, where Moving Out is a pretty good one of these with a sense of humour as well. You play as furniture arrangement and relocation technicians, or FARTs, having to help your customers move by entering their hulls and removing pieces of furniture. These can range from simple tables and chairs to large, unwieldy L-shaped sofas, and eventually moves to more exotic locations like having to move furniture off a plane. You can do wacky things like bust through glass doors and windows to shorten the time required to get to the truck, where the jumping and throwing physics provides an additional level of challenge. If you want more, there is a sequel in the works as well, so keep an eye out for that. Perhaps the definition of a co-op title is lovers in a dangerous space-time, where you and your friends are manning multiple stations on your very round battleship, having to communicate and coordinate such that you do not get destroyed. The trick here is that there are always more stations than people, so you need to balance between shields, weapons, propulsion, and so on, where it even added 4-player co-op for more fun, where it's relatively overlooked as compared to how good this game is. The young prince of the desert, blinded by his quest for glory and riches. The turncoat lurks in the shadows, eager to expose the corrupted king. One of the best co-op and competitive experiences is Towerfall Ascension, one that did launch on the Ouya back in the day, where you will not be surprised to see that this comes to us from extremely okay games, also known as the makers of Celeste. The physics of shooting arrows and having to run after your arrows to reload your quiver adds an amount of tension to the game, with an impressive co-op campaign that is certainly worth a play. I'm flouting my own rules a little since I don't normally cover early access titles in videos like this, but Core Keeper is too good not to share, a top-down sandbox action-adventure title that shares many things in common with games like Terraria. Mining and exploration is at the core of this game, where getting new resources to upgrade which then allows you to explore further is a very compelling gameplay loop, where since launch in 2022, this has absolutely exploded in popularity and is great with some friends. 
Another co-op focused title that released last year is Ship of Fools, a two-player roguelite title, which is not common at all, where you and a friend have to embark on a dangerous voyage, fighting monsters and manning the battle stations like in Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time mentioned earlier. Yes, I know, some of you groaned at the idea that this is a roguelite, but I would argue that it does provide some variety, with different upgrades and perks to choose from, and while it isn't extremely replayable, it is still worth throwing into a rotation of co-op games. Another awesome entry from 2022 is Plate Up, a title that I did not foresee would become so popular since it is yet another take on the top-down cooking and management title, of course drawing upon Overcooked as well, but does add a little bit of Diner Dash. You and your friends are working together to run and optimize a restaurant, where again, this is a roguelite, which, like Ship of Fools, does add to the experience. You are choosing random perks and upgrades after each level, slowly expanding and making a restaurant more complex, where serving your customers is as crucial a component as making the food, where it's a new twist on an old idea and is very well done. There have been a number of co-op puzzle platformers over the years, but I think that the best in class is Snipperclips, an adorable and family-friendly entry where you are rotating your character's body around in order to cut shapes out of your partner, where the new shape can then be used to solve the puzzle on hand. It's all light-hearted good fun, with some elements of timing in certain puzzles, but figuring out the shapes needed and puzzling your way through with a friend is the best part. I left beat em up games off this video since I have a dedicated video on this and was leaning more towards two-player co-op titles, with Blazing Chrome being an excellent modern example of this. Brazilian developer Joy Masher is known for their pixel art and throwback retro titles, with this game being a shining example of that, especially in the visuals department, but is also a tough as nails run and gun platformer that is more than a little similar to Contra Hard from 1994. It's a step back in time with how difficult and unforgiving this game is, where you should expect to see a game over screen and having to start from the first level. But if you're in for a challenge with a friend, this is one to get. There are of course a number of survival crafting titles on this list, since the genre is perfect for co-op, where the ultra popular Terraria fits this description to a T. As is the case with Core Keeper mentioned earlier, they have nailed the gameplay loop with mining and exploration, and then returning to your base to craft, build and upgrade, and then hitting out once again is just the best, where over the last 12 years or so, a whole lot of content has been added, so much so that this has sold a stupid number of copies and made the developers millions and millions of dollars. I've said in the past that Overcooked All You Can Eat is the king of the mountain, but I think that it has dropped a couple of spots where this release combines Overcooked 1 and 2, which, to be fair, did usher in a whole new era of co-op titles after they exploded in popularity. All You Can Eat was a little bit of a disappointment at launch since it seemed like a cash grab at the time, but the developers have somewhat redeemed themselves by continuing to release free content and even offering a 75% discount for owners of Overcooked 2 but this is the addition to play right now, especially if you have never played this franchise. The minute-to-minute -minute action is great, as you're getting ingredients, chopping, mixing and cooking before delivering them and then washing the dirty plates, where getting those 3 stars for maximum points in each level is a great feeling and the game is still fantastic.
This next title was the biggest success story of 2021, where the Norse mythology tinged Valheim as a third-person survival and crafting title with to gather resources and build, upgrade your tools and equipment before venturing out to face enemies where the epic sense of skill to the world and exploration is the best part. This game, with a couple of friends, is really just the best as you work towards constructing your ideal base as well as to fight alongside each other when taking on formidable bosses. It's another early access title, but one which I'm confident in its quality even in this stage of development where it only looks to get even better with time. Among all the games on this list, I've spent the most number of hours with Stardew Valley, both in single and multiplayer, but it remains my fondest co-op experience to date. Building up and running a farm with my wife was just the best, but going out on adventures together or even having to work together to harvest crops for the day was immensely satisfying, where you can watch this video for more relaxing games. 